certainly have fears that there is a serial killer at loose in Perth. Sarah Spears, Jane Rimmer, Kira Glennon. And every time you saw a young girl walking by, you think, oh God, is she going to be the next victim? Now, one man stands accused. If police are right, and Edwards is the Claremont serial killer, he's been hiding in plain sight for 20 years. Today in court, defence revealed there were common fibres found on the victims which didn't match Edward's car or Telstra pants. Welcome to week 20 of Claremont in Conversation. Natalie Bongiolo, Tim Clark and Alison Fan back with you after a bit of an unexpected break. So some of you have been in touch wondering where we've been. And last week after uploading the most recent podcast on Thursday, we received late notice from the courts saying that the trial would be adjourned for a day. Uh, so Tim, can, can you tell us, has there been any clarification as to what that was about? Um, nothing official, Nass, but my understanding was um, Mr. Jovic wasn't feeling the best on Thursday, and that, that was um, uh, obvious in court at, at, at times. Um, he was displaying um, symptoms of, of certainly of a cold. Um, and in the in the current environment, um, obviously that uh, might be highlighted a bit more than it than it would be normally. Mm-hmm. Um, he mentioned, Mr. Jovic had mentioned in court himself that he had a medical appointment on Friday afternoon, um, which was why we weren't going to sit as normal on, on Friday afternoon. But then very late on Thursday after we recorded the podcast, notice came through that um, court wasn't going to sit at all on Friday. And my understanding was that um, Mr. Jovic had contacted all the parties and saying, look, I'm, I'm feeling pretty crook, um, which is... Um, Australianism for not feeling very well for our overseas viewers, um, and uh, out of an abundance of caution, um, I think it was it was decided. Well, look, we won't sit at all on Friday, um, and we'll all come back fresh and revived um, on Tuesday after the long um, weekend, which is exactly what happened. I can report that Mr. Yovis looked and sounded a lot healthier today, um, and um, was able to basically take up most of the day himself on his feet doing his cross-examination um and uh um and everyone's um if there were any fears they were all eased by um by that um course of events so that's that's why um we had um, a, a little unscheduled break in transmission on friday but um we're all back um safe sound well and um and up for um uh, finishing off this this prosecution case as as we started today very good. It's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing, isn't it? Because we have with such a long trial, this is the first little glitch, really, from and, from the bar table that we've had. So yeah, from a health point of view, yeah, yeah. Every, everyone else has, has has remarkably stayed fit and well, given the amount of talking and uh, interacting that we've all been doing with each other. We know it has been uh, pretty quiet, and we're glad to hear that Mr. Jovic is well. Ali, did we have any visitors in the courtroom today? Well, the the two fathers. Dennis Glennon, who's been a regular um, visitor to the courts, and Don Spears, who hasn't been that regular, but he's got other commitments, uh, working commitments. They were both there today. And I suspect that um, the question that was asked about Sarah Spears might have brought um, her father there today, uh, which I thought was quite an interesting and somewhat puzzling question uh, relating to Sarah Spears, which was asked by Paul Jovich was one of his first questions um, to the fibre expert over the fibres. And, Tim, I don't remember whether he asked the DNA um, specialist the same question about um, whether they were examined in relation to Sarah Spears because, of course, we've had no body of Sarah Spears, but I presume they would have gone and got hair samples and other DNA from her home that obviously would have been um, examined along with the other evidence of this trial. But I just don't remember him asking that to do with Sarah with the DNA, whereas today's one popped out to do with the fibre. Straight up was whether the um, expert had, in fact, examined any of the fibres relating to Sarah Spears, which, of course, he said no. Yeah, well, I mean, obviously, physical evidence regarding Sarah is 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 very much less than Jane and Kira because of the, the, the fact that her body's never been discovered. But there there is... Um, physical control samples, I suppose you could call them, um, that were taken from um, the Spears um, residence and from um, uh, Sarah's 
flat as well after her disappearance because they needed those samples just in case they did find something and, and they could compare one to the other. Um, so there, 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 there was that sort of small element when, when we were doing the DNA sampling um, or portion of the trial. But you're right, Ali. So one of the very first questions that um, that Mr. Powell was asked today by Mr. Jovic was relating to Sarah and whether there were any fibres at all on their database, these masses and thousands and thousands of fibres, whether any of them related to Sarah. And, and, and his answer was... Uh, None or very, very few, and those very, very few, again, would obviously be control-type samples taken from hairbrushes and things or, you know, similar items, personal items that could then be, would be placed on the database as a matter of course, but only as a as a potential um, future um, uh, investigative um, branch um, just as hairbrushes and and personal items were um, taken from Kira and from Jane's residence um, so they could be cross-matched later on I suppose but uh, mm. as we know Sarah's body's never been found and so those type of samples have never been able to be sourced um, because of that fact. And given the sheer volume of fibres they did find, as you mentioned, did Mr Jovic ask questions about just how many of those could have come from unknown sources? Yes. Yeah, he was. So that was that, that was a, a large portion of this morning's cross-examination of Mr Powell by Mr Jovic. And it went to, uh, well, it, re- it revisited, I suppose, the, 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 the sheer volume of material that the, the fibre analysts at Chem Centre have gone through on on behalf of, of the macro investigation and uh, the, the, uh, the investigations that rolled along alongside it, I suppose, Matt. Um, and we're up to, yeah, 22,500 fibres in total in the database. 10,500 of those relate directly to macro i.e. Um, Glennon, Rimmer, um, Karakata fibres directly taken from those three victims um, and then uh, other samples taken from the car, um, other cars that compared them to and then we've got all the, obviously all the, um, the Telstra um, source material that, that came very late but then had to be um, analysed and compared comparatively quickly in 2018 and 2019 because of the the, the trial that was pending. Um, and, and so that, that breakdown of the numbers w- was done again this morning. Um, but then we got some really um, brand new sort of numbers and fibres that related to macro, and they went to the so-called adventitious matches. And what what they are, we'll explain it again. Uh, are matches that that the the, the the scientists try to make because they might have come from a, a, a source known to them, i.e., a police officer or a police officer's clothing or a a, a chem centre or a path west. Um, uh, operative that might have worked on the case and also um, other sources of, of, of fibres from the hospital and the state mortuary. And today we were actually told that, yes, those fibres were found on Kira and on Jane, um, and particularly um, there were five groups of fibres um, that, that were very much present. Um, they were a blue wool, um, which was the source being um, the booties or the overshoe that the police would have worn um, at the scenes or the scene certainly of um, Kira's um, body being found. There was a green polyester um, or two groups of green polyester, in fact, that was thought to contain fibres from the mortuary or the sheets used in the mortuary, those green those green um, sheets that you know, anyone who would watch any sort of crime drama would be familiar with. And there were 
two other types of wool, a blue grey wool and a green wool. Um, we didn't, we weren't actually given a source of those, a particular source of those, but again, they were grouped together and so we, we can deduce that they would have come either, either from a law enforcement or a medical um, type source. And those fibres were said to have been found um, on Jane and or Kira um, during the investigation, but then were ruled out as a critical fiber, obviously, because they were um, uh, they were they were from one of those one of those types of sources, which again goes to what we've been talking about: the transferability of fibers, the sheddability of fibers, how easy, how easily the, uh, the fibers are transferred from one source to another. Um, and it then also led on later on this today to Mr. Jovic asking specifically about you know, the possibility of, or the sheddability of, of certain fibres and the possibility that they were transferred from one person to another and that, that, that one person not being Mr. Edwards, um, which is obviously where Mr. Jovic is, is driving his, um, his questions and, and his um, deductions towards and there was a specific question in relation to that, wasn't there, about the uh, sheddability of the fibres from the Telstra pants. Um, and so it, Mr Jovic was really asking Rhys Powell why there wasn't more of these critical blue uh, fibres. Which he agreed with. Um, in fact, talking about the sheer number of fibres, uh, Mr Jovic pointed out that there were, because there were so many, what were the odds of a random match, whereas if there were just a handful um, to which Mr. Powell or conceded or agreed that yes, the greater number of fibres obviously gave you a better chance of a match than if you only had five or so. Mm. Um, but uh, yes, he did ask. He did agree too that he would have expected to see more fibres uh, of the delusted. Is that what is right, Tim? Than than yeah. the, the it saw. Yeah. Yeah. So that's right. So just to break that down, the Telstra pants were at when you break them down. Actually, there were three types of fibres, um, the blue fibres that made up these Telstra pants: the blue polyester, a blue non-delusted rayon, and a blue delusted rayon. Um, and th they all went to to make up these these pants. When the Chem Centre got a pair of these pants or a comparable pair of these pants in 2018, 2019, they did what was called a sheddability test. So they basically rubbed a white um, lab coat against these pants and then did tape lifts off the lab coat to see how many and how much of these blue fibres would actually shed to, to gauge how um, sheddable it was, how many would be transferred, and in what proportions they would be transferred. And what Mr. Jovic was really focusing his questions on today was that the type of fibre that wasn't found at all on Kira and Jane, which was one of these rayon-type fibres, was actually shed the most when they did this test in the lab. Mm. And so Mr. Jovic's postulation then was well doesn't that really um go against your hypothesis that these pants and fibers were shared either directly onto the girls by mr edwards or a secondary transfer from his car um, that he transferred onto the car that then was transferred onto the girls which were then found much much later and mr powell had to um, concede that yes it is very it was unusual that in the lab test this um, particular um, delusted rayon was the most shedded or the most transferred fibre during the test. But then when it came to the actual crime scenes, there weren't any of those fibres found in the car or on the, the, the two victims. Mm. Um, and so that was that was his main point there, um, being, well, um, your hypothesis says one thing, but your lab test then said another. Yeah. So it's the fibres that aren't there that is interesting to the defence. And, and that also came across when he asked about um, the fibres from the Continental Hotel because we know that fibre samples were taken from the carpet uh, but no match to Kira or Jane. What did Reese Powell say about that? Yeah, so that was the last well, one of the main points, last main points that Mr Jovic made in his cross-examination when he was talking about the Continental Hotel, the environment there 
um, and particularly the environment on the nights that Jane and Kira were there, which we know was busy, full of people, full of fabrics, and full of people wearing fabrics, bumping into one another. And his point was being made, well, how about that environment for a transfer, secondary and tertiary, you know, thirdly and fourthly transfers mm. of fibres? And Mr. Mr. Powell said, yeah, a busy pub with lots of different fibres, lots of different people and people interacting with each other. Um, uh, however closely, we're not, you know, we can only guess, but there would have been a lot of people together in a very small environment and a lot of people rubbing up against each other. And, and again, the question was asked, well, how how close, how obvious and, you know, how possible was it that um, these people could have transferred fibres from each other? And again, Mr. Powell said, well, yeah, that is, a, that is a very good environment for that type of transfer to occur. But the last point Mr. Jovic got to was a specific point about Kira's jacket. Now, we mm. know Kira was wearing a jacket on the night she went missing. She placed it on the floor of the Continental Hotel upstairs um, briefly for a time under a table, I think mm. you can remember. And then one of her colleagues actually rescued the jacket from the floor and gave it back to her because he was worried, A, it was a nice jacket and would get mm. ruined on the on the floor of a busy pub, and B, he didn't want Kira to forget it if she left. And so he gave that jacket back to her. She was seen wearing that jacket. Either The, 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 the accounts differ. Well, she was either wearing it traditionally wearing it tied around her waist as she walked away from the Continental that night. But either way, Mr. Yogi says, what are the possibilities of Kira putting that jacket on the floor and then picking up some fibres from that jacket that were on the floor and then they being transferred to her person, either her hair or other parts of her clothing in that process? Mr. Powell said, of course, it's possible. But then when he was, when, it, when they revisited that, um, postulation in, in re-examination by Miss Barbara Gallo. He was asked specifically, well, what are the chances of all those different types of fibres being on that jacket or being on the floor and getting onto the jacket and then somehow transferring from the jacket to Kira's hair and her t-shirt um, in that process, but not getting onto her skirt because the point was made that no critical fibres were found on the skirt and if the jacket had been tied around the waist as witnesses said it had been, then surely you would think some fibres, critical fibres and other fibres might have been found on the skirt. But Mr. Powell then concluded his mammoth stink nine days in the, in the <laughs> box by saying there were no critical fibres on that skirt. Mm. It's very interesting given what we've heard about secondary transfer and these things that there are no fibres on that skirt. Well, indeed, um, and given particularly that they were on the on the T-shirt, um, which the FBI discovered all those years ago. Yes, and of course, Tim, what tweaked my interest again today was um, the mention of Jared Ross, the schoolboy, which um, to see that the detectives and the investigators were looking at a link between the, the murder. For those um, who are not familiar with the case, of course, it's the other longest and biggest investigation, unsolved murder mysteries. We've had now state the murder of 11-year-old schoolboy Gerard Ross, which we heard about earlier when they brought DNA samples um, from the Gerard Ross case along to the UK when the detectives flew over there for further analysis. And today we heard again that the fibres that were found both on the Clermont victims and Gerard Ross were uh, shed actually from the booties worn by the investigators um, it's an interesting link, those two. It keeps popping up now and then, of course, we we may find out one day if there is one, but um, it's just plotting wrong there. They were they, Some detectives were convinced the two cases, the Claremont killings and the Ross cases, were linked. But um, whether we'll find out or not, no, but it just, I was just tweaking my interest today when they said that these booty fibres were found on, on both Gerard Ross, who, of course, disappeared just months after Kira... Um, Glennon's body was Yeah, found. very much so, Ali. From a mm. from a local perspective, from a West Australian perspective, the the two cases now appear very much intertwined. Where, where, and that's never officially been said. I, I know you, you 
your sources have told you, Ali, that they were definitely linked in the minds of some detectives. It's never actually been said clearly in court, but again today, the the and the fact that they not only were they taking DNA from both cases over in the same bag with the same detective, the same um, Pathwest employee to the same lab in the UK, mm. that would suggest to me that that they, they were the, the closest. The, the, the cases were obviously linked in that. They, they were yep. taken to, to the same people. Um, and now we have the Chem Centre, um, who've already said we were um, doing similar work, for, uh, fiber work on Operation Ambrose, which is the Ross investigation that we do with Mac, we were doing with Macro. They were linked in time. Uh, obviously, Jared was murdered in the same year as Kira, a little bit later, in October 97. His body was discovered in November 97. And now we've got concrete proof that the, that the chem center analysts were looking at the fibers from the Ross case and comparing them directly to the fibers in the macro case and today we actually saw that there were a fiber they were fiber matches but they were these adventitious matches that I described earlier on the green fibers and the uh, uh, that were they were found on Jared and they were found on on Kira and Jane and um, some of these um, other fibers um, from the booties, as Ali's just mentioned, were also found um, when they were looking at the, all the fibres from the from the Ross case. They were also found at the Macro case, and and that suggests to me that um, the, these cases were being worked on side by side, um, if you like. Um, but whether they were they were convinced that that they, they might have one um, suspect in in both those cases, um, we'll, we'll have to wait and see um, if if the police will ever. Um, confirm that because they've got to get evidence. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and, and, exactly we've discussed, <laughs> and as we've discussed before, the Ross case is also an open investigation. They are still looking for that person. Well, um, enough that they've done a quick TV report tonight on it anyway. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it's I, a very much, very much an open investigation. And so, mm. as we've discussed before, when police are still investigating, they are um, uh, loath to, to give out um, any more details. Um, than they need to to progress that investigation. Yeah, I mean, it's a very, very interesting um, thing to consider. I guess uh, what we need to keep in mind with the fibres here in this case is that these are fibres with corresponding properties. That's not to say they're fibres from the same source. Well, well, we've we've had that discussion a few times over the last yeah. couple of weeks. Nat, that's absolutely yep. right, and we and we and we drilled down in that again today. That um, corresponding doesn't identical, um, but it, um, it it can mean and um, they're very closely um, uh, linked and 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 very likely to come from the same source, but they can never be definite um, because obviously there are um, infinite sources that a fiber can possibly come from. But interestingly. Mr. Powell's conclusion today that the only source of these blue polyester fibres that were on were on were on all three of Mr. V- um, Edwards's well, one victim we know he he, he attacked and two that we uh, he alleged to attack all three of those. The only source of that blue fibre in all of those twenty two and a half thousand fibres in the database is the one that uh, the one that came very late, the Telstra pants. That's the only one that they f- they found um, that, that that corresponds. Um, in all those properties, in all those cases. Yeah. Uh, Ali, you mentioned, you know, Reese Powell's marathon nine days in the stand. Did the cross-examination go today how you expected it to? No. I thought it would be um, a lot stronger. I thought, as I said earlier, I thought there might have been a, something to uh, explain uh, Mr Jovic's very strong, explosive opening statement um, when he started the trial um, and I believe he's now finished. He's, um, we're waiting for the next UK expert tomorrow. So nine days, he, he he sort of just finished virtually in less than a day. Yeah, what about you, Tim? Yeah. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll look, at the, the, the questioning today was very detailed. Um, it went over quite a bit of ground that we'd already covered. He made he, he made a few good points, but... Um, the point I would make is Mr. Govich's fibre expert is is still to come. That is mm. that is that is yes. one expert that we know um, is in the wings, um, and so uh, what he will have to say and what conclusions he will draw from this, 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 this these um, all, all these pictures and all these um, MSP analyses that we've gone through um, that that 
that will be interesting um, because if he, if his conclusions are significantly different from a scientific viewpoint to Mr. Powell's and, as Ali said, Dr. Ray Palmer's, who's coming up tomorrow to, or starting tomorrow, um, that will be interesting because that will be a, a, a clear schism in the, in the scientific um, analysis of this, um, you know, apparently um, um, cold hard um, evidence that, that has been put before us. Um, and, that, and that could well be um, uh, what um, Mr. Jovic is, um, is banking on in terms of, um, of this portion um, of the trial. Yeah. Uh, it astounds me uh, with the questions that are coming from you at home about just how much knowledge you have of the fibres in terms of how deeply <laughs> you've been following it. We have a question from Paul Croft. As they have linked the fibres in the hair of Kira and Jane to the Telstra trousers of Bradley Edwards, is it the assumption that he was wearing his Telstra uniform during these murders? That seems highly unlikely to me, as the murders took place after midnight on the respective evenings. Surely he would have had to have changed by then, or is it assumed that he transferred fibres from his uniform onto the car seat, seats, which then transferred to the girl's hair? It's interesting because somebody came up to the park and asked me the same thing. They said, can he just wear his, his Telstra pants 24-7? Mm. <laughs> um, well, they've, yeah. never, they've, never really, uh, they've never really said one way or the other than that because they could never uh, ever know um, 100%. No. But they, um, so both those hypotheses that, um, that uh, are very eager listener has, has pointed out are um, what the uh, prosecution will point to um, and on the back of that they can point to those blue fibres being in the car 20 mm. odd years later mm. albeit in a very un, un, unkempt and unlooked at part of the car but they were, there they were and so they can say well look those fibres had obviously transferred or, or we, we say obviously transferred from the pants stroke shorts on to, in, into that part of the car and, and yeah. remained there for 20 years. So yeah. we know they shared. Um, and so um, Mr. Edwards was using that car every day, um, 12 hours a day, driving around Perth. Um, so they were bound to have been fibres in the car. And so whether they got from his pants directly onto um, Kira and Jane or whether they transferred from his car from Kira to Jane, it makes no difference because they come from him. Yeah. 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 Did Mr. Edwards appear very interested in the cross-examination today? Yeah, he was taking um, plenty of notes today. I, I mm. have to say, um, he was uh, extremely interested in in, um, in in the questions and answers that were coming, um, writing um, uh, furiously at some points um, with, with his um, with his supplied stationery. Um, um, so yeah, um, he's, he's still very much engaged um, in the process, um, uh, and uh, and no doubt will remain to be so. Um, he will like the rest of us have a different schedule tomorrow yep. because as Ali mentioned we have Dr Ray Palmer um, the, 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 the expert expert in fibres as it turns out <laughs> um, he will start to give evidence via video link tomorrow but given the time difference that means we will, won't will be starting until 2pm um, Western Australian time and, and finishing um, a lot later than that probably finishing um, after dark so, um, so that um, might mean that the uh, podcast is published a little bit later um tomorrow but um and and, f and for the next few days but um yeah just to sh show the listeners um we're we're here we're we're, <laughs> we're listening um and when we can um we will um obviously um post the uh, the latest update yeah he takes right. a lot of notes he takes a lot of notes but he doesn't sort of like to see um or i have seen in trials hand them hand them over to his lawyer or does anything with them what does he do at the end of the day he can give them to his lawyer because he's apparently not allowed to take those notes away with him we're talking about the accused here but he never yeah. ever interacts with his lawyers during no the very rarely day, I think that's, hmm. yeah i think that's fair ali um i have seen the lawyers so he leaves the, the notepad on the bench hmm. in the dock um when he's taken down to custody at the, at the breaks hmm. Um, and then I have seen the lawyers go to the dock and then pick pick up and and and, and peruse the notes. Oh, okay. um, but uh, it, yeah, it, direct interaction. You're right. In the court is is uh, very rare. Um, mm. But obviously, Mr. Jovic and, uh, and his co-counsel, um, Ms. Cleary, and the solicitors would have access to him in the um, in the holding cells before um, the court day starts. 
um, and after, um, yeah. if they wish to um, have any um, um, conversations with him away from uh, prying eyes such as mine. Yeah, you would have to yeah. think that there is plenty of discussion going on about the notes that he is taking. Well, Ali, Tim, thank you both so much for your time and you can get in touch with us at Podcast at wanews.com.au. We look forward to hearing from you. Until then, join us tomorrow for Day 80 of Claremont in Conversation. This podcast is hosted by Natalie Bongiolo, produced by Kate Ryan and recorded in the studios of Seven West Media. Sign up for daily emails and all the latest on the Claremont trial at thewest.com.au. And if local news delivered differently appeals to you, tune into WA's newest morning show, The West Live with Jenna Clark. It's talkback radio, but without the interruptions. Listen live weekdays from 8.45am on thewest.com.au or catch up with the podcast.